So, in spiritual life, we come in contact with the greatest beauty. Huh? Spiritual life should be beautiful. I mean, beyond all of the philosophy and the different arguments and doctrines and dogmas, different forms, Beyond all that, which is really part of name and form, it's really part of the world. It's not really spiritual. It's mundane. Huh? But it's handy for communicating ideas, and that's its purpose. But once the ideas are communicated, then the real spiritual life begins. And that's beyond words and symbols. Huh? I find over the years, looking back on my spiritual path, that the real revelations, the realizations came non-verbally by intuition and then, often, I had to do a lot of work to explain them to myself. <laughs> to find out the meaning, the significance of these experiences. So, both are necessary. Both are needed. But the verbal platform is necessary, but not sufficient. And once you're beyond the verbal platform, what rules is beauty. We all know things that attract us because of their beauty. It could be a person. It could be an idea. It could be a work of art. But some kind of aesthetic. Aesthetic simply means what we consider beautiful. And this may vary from individual to individual, but there are many things that we all in common together feel are beautiful. And beauty brings about love. How is that? Well, some of the things that are beautiful are, for example, truth, integrity, steadiness, Huh? These are part of beauty, because without them, you can't have beauty. Without integrity, without truthfulness and truth, you can't have trust, so you can't have steadiness. And without steadiness, there's suffering, because things are constantly changing too much. And it's nice to have a bit of change, but too much change is not good. So, to have love, we have to have beauty. Beauty is the inspiration for love. There's a wonderful passage in Rupa Goswami's scripture, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which means the ocean of spiritual loving sentiments which itself is a very beautiful <laughs> title, where he says that the beauty of the beloved is the attractive force that gives rise to love. So this beauty is something that we can all appreciate. 
in different ways perhaps, but in many ways the same. Huh? Truth, truthfulness, steadiness, integrity. These are beautiful things. And the various teachings, the great teachings of the spiritual uh, teachers are all based on these fundamentals. Integrity, truthfulness, and beauty. So we have to understand that beyond the verbal level, beyond the social level, when we are just with ourselves, beauty rules. And this is why we worship the goddess. Because Shakti is the original beauty from which all others are derived. You might say, well, Brahman is beautiful. Well, <laughs> Brahman is even beyond beauty. There's no consideration of qualities in Brahman. So, of course, the first thing that Shakti does is create Shiva. <laughs> Shiva's form. This is revealed in the Lalita Sahasranama. So what she does is create the beauty that she wants to see. And we can all follow in her footsteps. This is why I think really the prime occupation for humanity really is to create beauty. Now, beauty inspires love, but it can also express love. This is one of the wonderful things. Huh? And this is where compassion comes in. Compassion is the use of beauty to express love. So, when we create something beautiful, whether it's art or music or literature or maybe uh, just a beautiful event, a beautiful feeling, anything, what we're doing is sharing our love. Of course, the best kind of love, really the only kind of love, is love without attachment. Because if love gets mixed up with attachment, it becomes lust. And lust has negative consequences. It leads to suffering. Because everything in the world is temporary, if we become attached to something and lust after it, then when it goes away, we suffer. And even before it goes away, we can get into all kinds of negative states by trying to control and own and enjoy the object of love. That's, that's not really love. Real love is unconditional. Real love is love without attachment. Real love is a gift that's given freely. You see, this is why <laughs> we don't believe in charging for our teachings. Although, as a matter of practice, we have to ask for a token donation. We had the first trial in the, back in spring of our course site, and we made it free. But what happened is that a bunch of freeloaders showed up <laughs> who wanted to take the courses and not give anything back. But real love means if you receive something beautiful, you naturally want to give something beautiful in return. So unfortunately, people have become so degraded that if they're given something beautiful for free, they take advantage of it. So we had to make a token donation. But really, the people who participate in the latest episode or the latest round of courses are so much better quality, so much more motivated, so much more intelligent, and they have so much more integrity 
than the last round, simply because we asked for a token donation. I'm, I'm kind of a little bit uncomfortable with it, but it's practical. So <laughs> there are times <laughs> when love and compassion mean that you have to put up some barriers, that you have to make some friction. Huh? Because then how do you know, how can you prove that there's really love? See, like, to create beauty is a struggle. To create beauty, to share love, is a struggle and it can be painful. The work that I do creating videos and music, just lately I started getting back into music, it's, it's painful, it's difficult, it's a struggle. But I do it because there's something more important going on. Something that makes the struggle beautiful. <laughs> beautiful suffering. <laughs> and the beautiful suffering is, I'm taking all this trouble to share something beautiful with you. Now, you may think it's beautiful. You may not think it's beautiful. That's none of my business. What you think of this work what you think of me is none of my business. Now, of course, we've all been conditioned by corporate and government uh, schooling and so on to consider our identity as what other people think of us. But this is not real identity. We go over this in one of our earliest series on existentialism being in the world. And in that series, we discuss the existential truth that other people want us to be like them or to do what they want uh, because they're attached. They're not loving us unconditionally. <laughs> there are a lot of conditions attached. But if we accept that as our identity, if we accept the world's opinion or the group's opinion or whatever, other people's opinion of us as our identity, then we're going to really be in suffering. No. Our identity should be based on our creating beautiful things to share our love out of compassion, not out of attachment, not out of a desire to control or own or enjoy, but out of pure compassion. Because if we share beautiful things, it makes the world more beautiful for everybody. So the most beautiful thing, of course, is self-realization, enlightenment, moksha, samadhi. Uh, these things are all the most beautiful. Why? Because they lead to the end of suffering. They lead to complete freedom. Now, there are people who claim to be enlightened, who claim to be free, who claim to have moksha and all this. But if you look at their activities, you can see they're not living a simple life. They're engaged in the exploitation of the senses and sense objects in the world. Huh? And because of that, they're giving some watered down teaching or they're giving some inauthentic teaching like Neo Edwaita. But this is an immature stage. This is an actually unenlightened stage. <laughs> and they lead their followers astray. So what we decided very early on in doing this work is that we weren't going to make an organization. We weren't going to make, uh, we weren't going to charge. We were going to give this knowledge free of charge because we received it that way. It was given by others who went before us who had these same values. And so 
I would encourage you to take up these values. Huh? Take up these values of beauty, love, and compassion and create beauty in this world without attachment. Huh? Just give it away out of love. Huh? And you'll see your whole world will be transformed beginning with within. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.